Hi, this is Safari from Scrappy Mania, and today I'm going to create another layout. So this is my inspiration. Um, this is from an image that I capture. I did a screen capture of this image, and it was from the digital book, um, Close to My Heart. So if you go to Close to My Heart website, you can view their digital book, and then you can create an image of whatever layout you like there. And then you upload it on your Pinterest, and that way you can use it for the future when you are ready to scrap um, and you need inspiration. You can go and pull from your Pinterest board and use that. So that's what I'm, I did here. So I'm going to use this as my inspiration. The scallop, I do have a a, 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 a Cricut, but I'm not going to use a Cricut to cut my scallops. I'm going to show you how you can use a regular circle punch to create your scallops. And then I'm going to do a unique technique for the background, for this background paper. And other than that, I'm kind of going to make a little cluster there with some homemade flowers and so forth and some ribbons. So let's see what comes out. The paper that I'm going to use is going to be the Luxury Stack from Die Cut Rid of You. I'm trying to use up this pad. So this is going to be my third layout using this pad. So let me show you real quick the papers that remain in the, on this pad. And they're very nice. You can see the shimmer on these paper. I really like this paper to create delicate layouts, um, things that have butterflies, flowers, you know, girly layouts. Okay, so that's, that's my paper pad. These are the scraps left over from other projects, so I'm going to try to incorporate these in. Now the first technique that I want to show you is, this is going to be my background, this is going to be on top, but the first technique I want to show you is I want to create a unique background. This is going to have, this layer right here is going to be unique. So let me show you what I'm, I'm planning to do. Okay, so what I did is I took my ruler and then I measure every two inches from one end to the other. So I measure every two inches on this side. And then I did the same thing every two inches on this side. Then I went ahead and joined the, this point to this point, And I, I, did a, I made a line in between all my points. Okay, so once I did that, then I did the same thing on here. I marked every two inches and then mark every two inches on the opposite side and did the same thing and I created this little checkered um, board that you see there. Now I want to show you something I think is going to come out very nice. I am going to go ahead and emboss my lines. I'm going to emboss my lines between each of these lines, I'm just going to take my embossing tool and create a line. And I think I'm going to need the Martha Stewart. It's a little larger than this one. So I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to go ahead and score all my lines and I shall be back. And actually, once you do that, actually, you needed to create another fold, like a quarter inch. So two inches, and then two and a quarter, four inches, four and a quarter, and so forth. Because what we want to do is, what I'm trying to do is create something like this. So I'm going to have to go back. I'm going to score a quarter inch below each of my score line, and then I'll shall be back. Now that I rescored the, the, the paper, so what you need to do is, you're going to mark it every two inches and then so two inches and then two and a quarter so you mark two inches then two and a quarter four inches four and a quarter six inches um, six and a quarter and so forth um, and it's just so that way you can create like um, what you want to do is you want to create that little fold so you need those two folds so you can score at the quarter mark and then score at the, the two inches mark or the four inches mark and you create that nice little fold like that. Okay. Then you're going to put a little bit of glue. I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive just to make sure that I keep it down. 
and then I'm just going to hold it to make sure it kind of curves down so then once I do all this side then I'm going to turn it over and do the other side and it's going to look like a quilted piece of paper so let me go ahead and do this off camera and I'll shall be back okay so this is what came out of that 12 by 12 so and I backed it up with a piece of paper now I try to sew it with my sewing machine but it did not work very well but if you have a nice industrial sewing machine or if you use a lighter cardstock now I'm using very thick um, die cut with a view cardstock so that's why it was kind of hard to fold it and to do this this piece but you can use a smaller uh, a lighter weight um, paper and it actually worked fine. So now when I put this on this page, it kind of gets a little lost. So what I want to do is I'm going to cut a, a 10 by 10 and then I'm going to use my Martha Stewart um, stamp around the page and I'm going to stamp a border and then cut the middle out. So I finished stamping around my frame and I really like how it came out. I went ahead and rounded out the corners and I cut out the frame, the middle part out. And that's going to go right here. So I'm going to assemble the piece together. Now, if you notice that there's a little gap in between the frame and my quilting piece, but I'm going to put my quilt down my quilted paper and then I'm going to put the piece on. It was because of the dimension on the, that quilted paper I needed to put some foam adhesive on my frame so it will, it will have a, it will be a little raised or in the same um, level as the paper below and then to hide the gap between the quilt page and my frame I'm going to go ahead and put some lace around the border to give it that delicate look. So I lay everything down, here's my lace, but then it kind of missed something. I think I need a border of some sort. So I'm going to go back to my stack and let me look and see. That's too dark, so that's not going to work. I don't have any blue. I need to go more into the brownish pinkish tone. That's not going to look good. That may look good, but I need, I want a little more contrast. And I think what I need is kind of something to pick up that brown on the edges. So I don't think it's going to work with this paper. However, I do have this silver, I mean this gold looking kind of paper. Um, and that's not going to work either. Notice that it's just not kind of looking correct or doesn't look right. So let me see if I find a piece of paper that's a little more brownish in color that may go with this. Now that may go you see how nice and dark and just gives it a little more and then I can create the lace pieces can be of this same brown well let me see if I find something else I think that one's okay but all the colors let me look at some other colors that I have so I had to go and find some more papers on my paper stack and then I found these these are from Studio K, um, from Cayman Company, and this was, I believe, the Heritage Papers. It came with a bunch of other paper. Let me pull it out so you can see it. I do not have the cover anymore. It, I, I don't know where it went, but it came in this paper pad, and it's kind of like the Heritage Papers from Studio K. It's an old, old stack and it's a pretty and I bought it because it had this family record that I was planning to use and it's been years since I had this paper um, laying around so um, so that's what I'm going to use that was the only one that I kind of found that the colors um, looked like they will go so um, 
So that's what I'm, I need to now, it, I'm going to stack this on, so see how nice it looks together, and then I'm going to put this on top of this, and then this is going to have, this is going to be scallop, and I'm going to cut this down, so that way it will be my, this will be one layer, 12 by 12, this one's going to be a smaller layer, um, I'm not sure what size yet, because I want a nice scallop edge around. And then I'm going to cut this one down. And actually for the scallop edge, I'm going to use a, a circle punch. So let me cut this down. Now let's go and start working with creating that scallop edge. So I went ahead and here all my um, circles, as you can see in the back. Now I'm ready to here. And then I, I did good, put some distressing ink, walnut ink on the ovals on all my circles and I did put a little bit on my background paper so now I'm just gonna adhere everything down on my main page looking good so far let's refer back to our page here hold on okay so this is my inspiration page okay um, even I did not put the, the um, scallop border underneath my frame here but I did put it on the second frame um, so now we need to put a little um, photo mat here and I think I'm going to create a photo mat 5 by 7 and I don't have a picture yet but I'm going to create the photo mat I'm going to put a little sentiment here put a little sentiment here my photo mat 5 by 7 and then there's a lot of clusters right here Okay, now that I have this down, I'm going to start building up my page. Okay, so I'm going to teach you how to create a, a rose. So we're going to use some felt. And actually, this is batting left over from a project. So I cut this strip about half an inch. Eh, maybe a little. This one's a little wider. But I just cut three strips and they're about... Um, this is about 16 inches long and it's about an inch and these are like half an inch or whatnot. I just cut strips so what we're going to do is we're going to fold it in half so let me go ahead and use a little bit of adhesive to hold it in place so I kind of fold it in half now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut about an eighth and an inch wide so you're going to fringe it so now you're going to roll it putting a little bit of adhesive so that way it holds it in place ah, I got my adhesive on my finger Just keep rolling it. I'll just cut this piece off. So there's a flower. See how cute that looks? And now I'm just going to put place my flower on this chipboard here. And here's one flower. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing that and creating more of these flowers. Now if you want this to be a little more fluffier, what you can do is you can, like this strip, when I fold it in half, it's actually going to create a little bigger. So if you make the strip a little um, fatter and then you fold it, these um, will be a little larger than what we have here. But I like that. Okay, and it's relatively kind of flat for your scrapbook so I think it's gonna look good so let me go ahead and create some more and I shall be back okay so I finished my little flowers so this is so I was able to make four out of the scraps of batting so now I'm gonna show you how to create another different type of quilling flower using a die I bought these dies some time ago and they're the cuddle bug die and they create cute little flowers. So I, 
So I bought the daisy and this is a daisy. It comes with three dies and then the leaf die. So this is the leaf. Okay, and they're thin dies. I also bought, let's see, I got the daisy. I have the quilted chrysanthemums and I have the quilted rose. Okay, so I have those three. So let me show you how to use these dies. I'm actually using my side kit because it's a nice thin die so I don't need to bring out my big my big shot or my um, cuddle bug. I just wanted to use this this small little one. And a lot of times I like using the sidekick when it's small little little dies so that way I don't have to kind of it's a lot easier to move around and it's more portable. This one I bought it some time ago at Michael's and it was only 10 bucks. So that's why I bought it. These are the plates. So I have the I bought the long plates. So I'm going to use, put the die with the die up. You're going to make sure you put the cutting surface up. Then you place your strips. So it, I, these strips are one inches. So you can cut all your strips one inch wide. And it, work, it will be perfect for the die. Then you put the next, let me make sure it doesn't move. You got to make sure this stuff doesn't move. So then I'm going to put my next layer on top. And then I'm going to put a shim. Now this shim was created using some of my plastic dividers from my um, copper hopper. And it's three layers of, it needs three layers of those plastic dividers. And that's going to go up. I'm going to take this whole piece over here and just run it through my machine. And it cuts it perfect. And then you just cut it all up. Just pull it out like this and here's the other one. And then what I'm, I'm going to show you how to create one. I already cut a bunch of these dies and I cut the centers as well. So I put this aside here. So I have all these strips. You need some kind of adhesive. And then you're going to need the quilling tool. It comes with a little cute little quilling tool like this one. And then you're going to take, you're going to cut, the, it comes with a, uh, the thin one, the thin die. Or let me see if I can find it. Uh, comes, all of them come with, with the center. So this is going to be your center. And then you build the flower around that center piece. So I'm going to take my center. And I'm just going to roll it. Okay, and then I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive right there, holding it in place. Now I'm not going to take it off. I'm going to take, this is the daisy die, so I'm going to take the small little daisy and then put a little bit of adhesive right where I stopped. And you're going to place this there. Oops, I let it dry too quickly. Okay, so let that set, and then you're going to twirl, and I usually use two of these, okay. I'm going to hold it. And then let me get another small one. Actually, let me go ahead and put the bigger one right there. And then roll it up. 
okay as you can see here and then you just pull it off go ahead and glue it before I, it unravels okay then it, you pull it off and then you bend the flowers or the petals back and there's your quilted flower now if I would have been a little um, smarter I could have put a little bit of a before I rolled it I should have taken a little bit of my distressing ink let me get a sponge and I would have daub the edges but you can still do it after you form the flower Okay, so these are my finished flowers using the Cuddlebug Quilling Dyes. So the daisy, no, the, um, these are the rose, these are the daisy, and this is the chrysanthemum. And I also put a rhinestone in the middle. So I'm going to set those aside. Now I want to show you another technique. Well, I was creating a lot of these paper um, embellishments it's not paper this is um, paper clay Martha Stewart paper clay and I created some of these embellishments with the dies that she have but then it doesn't really go with my layout because if I put that here it's just too bright for the layout and I want to tone it down and look how beautiful the gold looks so I want to create the same effect I want to change the color so you can create a bunch of these embellishments and then you can change it whatever color you want using some gesso so you're going to need some gesso just to go ahead and get rid of all the bright red color so I'm going to go ahead and apply some gesso on my frame I decided to get some of those foamies that um, shapes that you buy I got a bunch of those that I got from a friend of mine and it has a lot of hearts and flowers so I want to go ahead and use some of those for this layout so I'm gonna put a little coat of gesso okay I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll be back to put some more color on our pieces okay so look how gorgeous those look I already put a, one coat of paint now I'm ready to paint these so they're nice and dry and uh, for this one I'm going to use some pink and this is this is making memory paint and it's a rose petal is the name of the paint I'm going to put some there and let's see for the center I might want to put some glitter for the center I'm going to put a little bit of this glitter in the center of the flower so let me go ahead and put a nice coat of pink now I'm going to take a thinner brush and I'm just going to pick some of this paint up and dab it in the centers of these flowers okay so now this piece is dry so let me show you I'm going to get some silver nail polish and going to go ahead and that's what I use here the glitter that you see here was with the gold nail polish so I'm going to take some silver nail polish and you can also use silver glitter glue or anything any like anything like that and just going to brush a thin coat and the reason why I like nail polish because it has that glossy varnish 
So it's not only going to give it glitter, but you're going to have that nice glossy smooth coverage like this one you can really see is kind of glossy instead of having a matte finish so that's the reason why I always use kind of nail polish when I apply my glitter and look how beautiful that piece looks now with the glitter and the paint it really looks nice so I was able to change it up so I'm going to put a little more glitter on my foamy pieces okay so I'm going to let everything dry and then we'll be back and we're going to put it put the whole layout together okay so I'm ready to put everything together so my these are the two little hearts and they're going to go right here so I went ahead and put some foam adhesive on the back so here I had to put some foam adhesive on that piece so that way it will be a at the same level as my base page and I also put some more foam adhesive on this rose this paper rose so that way it will lay flat against all the dimension that I already have now I already put the banners as you can see here I'm showing you there's the banners of paper and there's my little tag that says I love you and now I'm just putting all my other pieces um, around my um, page I felt like it needed something there on top. That's why I put that little tag that says forever and ever. And then I put a heart underneath there. So this is the Martha Stewart frame that I I changed the color just using some gesso and some regular paint and some of my glitter nail polish. And I'm going to place it down there with a quill, quilling rose in the center or I think that's the daisy and you know the whole reason why I created this layout is I wanted to work on you more quilling technique because I feel like the quilling gives your pages a nice elegant look and it's pretty economical to do and it just requires little strips of paper and scrap pa um, scraps and it, it really makes a difference on your page now on this layout I kind of went wild with all my embellishment the inspiration page only had a couple of flowers however after I did all those quilt those flowers those um, I just started placing a bunch of them around my page and I think it came it came out nice and then I have some extra little flowers, fabric flowers that I bought some time ago. And those I use to fill in some of the gaps that my um, that I uh, it just looked empty. And then I'm putting some little more dimension, some foam adhesive, and then putting some more of those fabric flowers throughout my page to I fill in the gaps. And then um, that's some of my bias, my um, seam binding ribbon that I created just using some, some paint and some glimmer misting. So my um, the, the companion page for this layout has some seam binding and that's why I wanted to include that in this page to tie it with the other page that this is going to be next to in my album. So just putting more clusters all throughout the page. And there's are some more of those flowers, silk flowers. And those silk flowers also came with some silk leaves. And I'm also using those throughout the, the page as well to fill in gaps. So I think I'm almost done. I was trying to put that. I think I do use that flower. I do put it on the side later on. And then that's another clay piece that I created with the Martha Stewart paper clay and with her molds. And I think I'm done. Done with my page. 
So here, the final page, and then this is the inspiration. That's the inspiration, and this is my page. So I hope you like this layout and this tutorial, and thank you for watching. Bye now.